Welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors channel. My name is Chris, bringing it to you here from Westlake Village, California. It is bright, it is early. And is it a bull party? Is the bull party over is the question. And what I wanna bring up to your attention here is one of our boxes of peace and prosperity or death and despair, which is right here front and center. What am I talking about? This gap on the CMEs, this gaping gap, which, by the way, guys, what do these gaps represent? Well, it's a, a gap in the futures market where CMEs, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, closes from, call it Friday at 3 p.m. to Sunday at 3 p.m. Bitcoin trades 24 hours a day, so therefore, when it opens back up, price can be lower or higher. Needless to say, there was a gap right here. It got filled, short-term rejection, came back, back above it, rejected. I mean, nice consolidation. And what did we say yesterday? I'm pretty sure I said I called it up to 34,000 um, based off of the Fibonacci extensions. But let's just measure it on CMEs because the CMEs is a bit different. And you can see here that we are cresting the 1618 fib and um i think i called it uh yesterday up to here uh up to this wick where the stops are going to get taken out um and that's where your parabolic blow off happens why should we see a parabolic blow off well the fomo is set to kick in guys um nice little tweet from crypto rover here Says the Bitcoin BlackRock spot ETF is so close to being accepted. This would push Bitcoin to 100,000 in no time. Here's why. Uh, it, so bottom line is, is BlackRock's uh, got their ticker for their ETF. That's going to be the symbol for the BlackRock ETF. I wouldn't touch it with a 100-foot pole. BlackRock is probably as dirty as they get. And now they're getting involved because they know everything priced in Bitcoin goes down forever. If they don't own some, they're going to be screwed. They are going to be screwed. And just like this schmoo bear right here, look at that face. I mean, come on, guys. This, this guy needs to get fired. Um, so what else is happening right now? You've got an Ethereum ETF about to accept it. Um, and uh, what else, what else, what else? Low liquidity in the market. New all-time highs in no time. Well, I, I don't know if I necessarily agree with that or I don't know what his time frame he's looking at, but um, we want to see if we get rejected here or not. Um, Short-term pullback down to 31,000 on CMEs is okay. Additionally, um, where is the where is the pivot on the market? Well, let's just start off with the weekly time frame. Now volatility is ticked up, and we expect the price to go in the direction of the momentum. Will remain up as long as we're closing weeklies above twenty six. Sorry, twenty seven seven. 100. So momentum, it, that's how we trade. Trend, momentum, and volatility. What is the trend? We're in an uptrend. Momentum is up. Volatility is expanding from the lowest level on this chart's history. And this is Bybit. But let's check out some of our others. Um lowest level ever on BitGet, probably not for Coinbase. This is gonna be Coinbase. So not the lowest level ever, but it is reaching above 25%. I would expect this to continue. And momentum is up here as long as we are above uh, this level. Now, um, where do the bull traps and the bear traps come in? Right at the 0.5 of the 618. So. Even if we get a short-term pullback off the 382, it's 36,000. I would suspect 
that we get some brief continuations to the upside. Um, at least based on the weekly time frame and volatility expansion. Uh, let's see what else do we have going for us in our corner. Daily is continuing to extend. Um, we just want to see the volume continue to increase. As soon as volume starts to tick down, I mean, we're still in such a low liquidity environment. It's just going to take a little bit for this thing to really start to get going. Um, so short-term pullbacks down to 31. Um, yeah, as long as we're kind of holding the pivot here, which is the uh, 236 on the daily time frame, I, I would even go far as to say, as long as we're above 26.6, um, trend continuation to the upside. We just don't want to see that area get damaged. We're going to have some economic news coming out here shortly, which... I'm willing to bet by the green flashes there, it all came out bullish for the dollar. S&P Global Services PMI, higher than expected, higher than expected, bullish for the dollar. So yesterday, Bitcoin had the benefit of the dollar coming down yesterday, but I'm more leaning towards uh, a downside resolution, you know, a downside mer move, Merv, a downside Merv first for Dixie, which will benefit Bitcoin, um, even though we're getting a short term pullback. I'll throw on some of the moving averages. And we did say green 55 is in play and um, looks like a bit of a reversal, if you ask me. But where does the invalidation happen? Um, momentum flips back to the upside today above 105.95. So call it 106. Volatility expansion um, would, you know, if we do see that happen, you know, dollar upside, not necessarily the best case for Bitcoin, but still, I think we're in this kind of FOMO state right now. Where, because once Bitcoin gets above 40,000, I mean, it's just, you probably missed out. You probably missed out. So the question is, you know, what altcoins are, what, what are the, dare I say it, what are the shit coins that people are going to buy because they can't afford Bitcoin? And if you followed that trade setup yesterday on Compound, congratulations. Uh, I think uh, Compound did rally a bit uh, since we mentioned it yesterday at, I don't know, 8 a.m., which would have been somewhere around here. And it does look like continuation of the upside for Mr. Compound, at least in the short term. Um, we're in the bullish control zone heading, heading up there. Heading up there for some more fun. Um, hourly time frame does look like it is putting in a short term top, and you could target, you know, the next potential buying opportunity around the green 55 or actually around this pivot here at 4373. If you think you missed it, um, there is that potential and there is going to be some bearish divergence forming lots of bearish divergence on the four hour time frame if we do not take out 49 bucks. Uh, but as I mentioned with um, Ave being the leader, Ave being the competitor, typically what happens, well, um, Compound does whatever Ave does, just a little bit of a laggard, a little bit of a laggard uh, compared to Ave. So did Ave take out the high of July 2023? Yes. Has Compound taken out the high of, was it, Ju no, it wasn't July, but it was this last previous high here. Whoa, where was July? Is this July? Even more of a reason why I am bullish on Compound, great product, isn't financial advice, not a financial advisor. Um, you know, of course, everything has a lot of risk in crypto land. So 
Make sure you have your risk management in place. Um, what else do we want to talk about? Again, on Bitcoin um, for the shorter term pullback, I'm looking for four hour volatility to start to decline. Right now it is maxed out. The moving average is maxed out. So essentially ticking below this guy right here or closing below 32,898 on a four hour is going to send it down for a bit of a test back down to probably this breakout region at about 30,700. Um, that would be my guess for a short term pullback. And then uh, we play the game of, you know, higher low or not on the daily time frame, which I would suspect again, 32,898, that's going to be a critical level. If we break below there, you know, probably going to retest the most recent breakout level somewhere between 32 and 30. 30,000 bucks. Um, so all things looking good so far. So good on Bitcoin. What else is happening? Ethereum is waking up, breaking out of our cone. Where does the measure move off of the cone? Well, we just want to see a closure today, uh, back above 1800 bucks, call it 1800 bucks. Um, looks like we are heading up for these stops right here at 1873. And uh, really, you can see on the four hour, volatility has not declined yet. On the hourly, we're still putting in higher highs and higher lows. What well, it looks like we're going for the next higher low. It is setting up for a good uh, potential sell, but Again, I think people are going to start running to Ethereum when they realize, oh, I can't afford Bitcoin. I'm going to get me some Ethereum uh, because, well, in general, let's take the measure move off of this. So from the middle of the cone, oh, what do you know? It lines up right there at 1913. And let's check in on Ethereum um, futures here. ETH futures, where are you? Do I have it up? I don't think I do. ETH futures, where did you go? There it is. So where is the weekly gap for the ETH futures is way up here. So I would suspect that Ethereum falls in line and we head up to this zone here. That's actually higher than I suspected. I was thinking about um, somewhere around 2000, 2000 an ounce. Um, that was my overall guesstimate based off of the Bitcoin rally yesterday. Bitcoin definitely put in a nice move and I would suspect Ethereum plays a little bit of catch up as Bitcoin is the digital gold. Ethereum is the digital silver in this market. And then just other coins to keep your eye on. Again, Chainlink is uh, looking bullish here. Tag this trend line, short-term rejection. And um, if we can break above that, well, I already think that um, the, the move for this one still has a little bit higher. So maybe we break out here and then consolidate a little bit and then take the move, the leg up to about 22 bucks. Um, that would be the parabolic, you know, target off of this year long consolidation. Um, if the rumors are true, and this is really going to be the one to, to um, tokenize the real world assets, I might do a video on that another day. So compound Ave link. <laughs> Um, what else do we want to take a look at? I think that's going to be it for today. So again, uh, longer term target for Bitcoin is going to be right here at 49,000 bucks, 49,000, definitely in the cards and would that line up with the uh, volatility expansion play? 
credit to Crown on that one. Um, definitely puts in his research on these statistics, but as volatility expands on the weekly time frame, and you have momentum cross to the upside, average play is about 50%. So that would be uh, a bit more than 50%. So where does 50% take us? Up to 40,000. 40,000 um, might be a good area to start looking at uh, pulling some profits off the table. Um, if we cannot clear this gap at, uh, you know, on the CMEs, if we shoot right through the gap, that'd be a good indicator that, hey, we are going to uh, head up to that $49,000 target, um, which would not be a surprise for October and um, for a bit of a run going into the end of the year, especially if the stock market continues to rally and Dixie continues to go down. Now, personally, I do think that the um, stock market has the potential to go down from here, but um, I wouldn't be surprised if given it. Finally, we got the gap fill. Finally, completely filled the gap here. It looks like, um, was it yesterday? Yep, yesterday gap fill. So again, very similarly, those gaps like to get filled. And if we shoot through it, okay, bad. If we hold this area, very, very good. And I would expect the Bitcoin rally, the Bitcoin saga to continue onwards and upwards. And yep, I think I'm gonna wrap it up there, guys. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure you hit that like button and share it with a friend. Have yourself a blessed and highly favored day and I will see y'all tomorrow.